Hello and welcome to Teacher Talk, the podcast for teachers who are lifers but still want to have a life. This is Jared, and as always, I'm joined by my partner, Johanna. Hey, Johanna. Hi, Jared. What are we going to talk about today? Head lice. Like, is that a metaphor for something? No, we're going to talk about actual lice. Like an like a employee to a co-worker that won't leave you alone is like a louse? Is it? I don't know. It would... <laughs> No, like actual head lice. The actual insect that the lives in hair. The actual thing that lives in hair. Okay. Everyone gets it and no one wants to talk about it. If you have young children. What's that have to do with teaching? It's like a thing that you deal with if you teach young children. If you teach older children, it's a thing you are fearful of um, because it is unknown and scary. But if you work with young populations, then it is... It is a constant reality. Why are you afraid of it in the with older students? Because it's gross. It's like a creepy bug thing that you can get from other people. And so you don't want to like hug people or do... Yeah, you know, what it, why, is, why is it scary though? I don't know. We just were always creeped out by what, it. I used between, to be creeped out by it really bad. What's the difference between secondary and elementary then? Oh, well, it turns out it's the hair dryer, I think. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but I'm going to say the hair dryer. Okay, whatever. Um, no, what? what... <laughs> I sense frustration. <laughs> as, as a teacher, though, why? Why? what's the distinction? Well, in the ele- it's a- in every elementary school. It's, it's in every preschool. It's an elementary preschool. problem? Yes. Okay. I thought it was just like a poor thing. No, no, (laughs) no, maybe that's why no one talks about it is because that's what, no, it, it is a thing that has no connection to who you are or your hygiene level. It is just a truth of young kids being young kids and interacting and playing together. To some extent, it's like, you'll notice it quicker if you're always in your hair no really Uh uh-uh i have worked with families where that some kids are predisposed to feel the head lice right away and some kids are not i think i don't know not a doctor what's the show we watch where it ends with not a doctor it's the dan gore uh production company logo okay from like brooklyn 99 yeah okay so I'm I'm not a doctor. Not a doctor. I'm gonna offer practical real life advice that works. I have no idea why it works. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> so you're saying poor people problem myth. Total myth. Hundred percent. Hygiene problem myth. Total myth. It's just gonna happen sooner or later in in elementary schools. If you teach in an elementary school, it will be something you deal with every single year. If you work with, if you have kids in elementary school, I dare you to have a kid go through elementary school and, and you not get a case of head lice. Okay. So. Unless you do what I'm about to share in this podcast. So let's lay it on me. Okay. So step one, we're going to talk about what to do when you have the head lice. You're skipping over the diagnosis. I am. So we've, whatever happened, happened. You figured out you have head lice? You figured it out. So now for the rest of this, it's so you have head lice? You, so you have the head lice. <laughs> All right, what do we do? <laughs> okay, so don't buy the chemicals. Don't buy the chemicals? No. Why not? I've heard they don't work. It's putting chemicals on your kid's head, and they're not necessary. Like, I have a way that works that does not require chemicals, so why, why do it? Because if it worked, I would maybe want to do anything. Well, no, but I think that's why people get it is like the kid, the head lice are like, I've heard. Like it only kills a part of the life cycle. And so you have to do it multiple times and you do have to do it on the right day. And then if you don't get all of them, then it'll slowly come back. And so I don't think it's an effective method because it gets people like having a cycle of months dealing with this rather than it just be... An annoying thing that happened for one week. 
I think we read the last time we were dealing with this personally then. The head lice that survived today have already survived generations of the shampoo too. Yeah, maybe that's so why I, I think I that. think it's increasingly less effective. So even if you're going to do it, you'd have to do other stuff anyway. Yes, the, this is easier. All right, what I is think. this? Okay, so f- phase one, they have to get the right comb. You get the right comb? Yes. What's the right comb? The one, it's called like the Knit Terminator. The Knit Terminator. Is that a brand name? Are you endorsing so. a specific product? I think I am for the first time. It's because it is brilliant. It's a metal comb. It's got like sp- the metal itself is spiraled. It's extremely yeah, it lo- close together. It looks like a metal hair pick or like an Afro pick. Yes, but apparently a lot of the combs out there, the prongs are too far apart. And so you, so it's got to be this one. You should probably put a link to it on the podcast description. Oh, gosh. You and... I feel like if you did the podcast descriptions, you would <laughs> constantly assign Just, homework. Well, they I mean, can't Google it. What if it's in the podcast description? Oh, fine. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so this product—it's like a little—it's a little comb, a little pick-like comb. Yeah, maybe we should talk again about my experience, like my what, what gives me the right to come on here and give advice. On yeah, this. they don't have to listen. That's true. But it might, ha- like, I have helped. You've dealt with your kids. You've dealt with a lot of friends' kids. I've dealt with a lot of friends' kids. I've dealt with our kids. I've got the system refined to a science. Yeah, I, I, I'm a believer. So they, they, <laughs> what, what qualifies you to give advice on any of the 30-something episodes that we've done? Well, we've prefaced how long I've taught and that I enjoy teaching. Whatever. That... People people will listen and either they believe you or they won't. It doesn't matter. Just say okay. what you think. All right. So you need this comb. I have I have taken this comb to many a households because they did not have this comb and the waiting the two days for Amazon is I heard you can buy it at some stores, but yeah. Anyway, I would recommend buying this comb before you have the head lice. If you have kids in elementary school. If you have kids in elementary school or preschool, it's coming. You're going to want it. You're going to want it. Worst case scenario, you never use it. It's, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, you have this comb. The first thing you're going to do is you're not going to freak out. Okay. You're not going to freak your kid out. Definitely not. I don't care how grossed out you are. You are going to call this a science experiment. It's a science experiment? No, because you'll give your kid drama over something that is not dramatic. Someone created drama in you. Stop the life cycle of the drama. It is fine. It is no big deal. Yes. Okay. Don't play it up for the kid. Don't play it up for you. So you're not freaking out, even though you kind of want to set your kid's hair on fire. Yes, that, you do. That you would, do. That would be bad. <laughs> You just want to burn everything down to the ground. It'll be better. We'll just restart. So what do you do? (laughs) Okay. So once you have it freaked out, you're going to collect all the bedding, hats, coats, gloves, stuffies, anything that's fabric based. And you're going to start cycling it through your dryer on super high heat. Okay. Okay. That it's too hot. It's too hot. It kills them. The heat, I have done some experimenting and the heat kills them. Now, people are going to say they have all, they're going to tell you like tea tree oil and the, look, there are all sorts of products on the market and I've been places where they've purchased those products and then we've covered lice in the product and then the lice just keeps moving around. Now, I don't know, maybe it eventually dies, but when you blast them with heat, it's like, zzzz, and they're gone. So heat is your friend. So don't kill them with fire, but kill them with heat. Kill them with heat. And that means everything that they could be on, even temporarily, because they don't live on bedding or anything. They don't live on anything. So if you can't put it in the dryer, just put it in a plastic bag. and They can live for a long time. They can. Okay. So I got I got all, especially my hats and stuff, like, like winter caps. Yes. Because those seem to be the worst. I don't know why kids feel the need to like share their stocking caps, but they do. They do. 
So they do. They share. They buy helmets. They share. They're just they're sharers, and okay. so they're gonna share. You should see them in an elementary school. It, you would you could literally see two kids for no random reason just rub their heads together, cause just <laughs> cause. <laughs> like I'm just telling you, it's it's gonna happen. Which is normally is cute, but when you're thinking about lice, it's horrifying. It's horrifying when you're thinking about lice. Yes. All right, so the the clothes and fabric and stuff is on the super high heat in the dryer. Correct. Do you wash them or do you just dry them? You really can just dry them. The, the lice supposedly live in water, and that's why washing your hair, that's why it's nothing to do with cleanliness. It's because they're not going to drown. They can hold their breath, I guess, for a very long time. Sure. So not going to do anything but just super high heat. Got it. Okay. I did that. Now, while that's happening, you're going to take your children and yourselves and you're going to take showers, but you're going to leave in some of the conditioner because this comb, like I've helped, uh, we have kids that have like really curly, coarse hair. I've helped different people who have kids with really curly, coarse hair. So the more coarse or curly your hair is the more conditioning you need otherwise you will your child will think you're killing them with this comb right, so this is a very fine comb that yes. is intended to grab on the things yes it grabs onto everything so once the hair is wet and a little bit of the conditioner has been left in then you are going to section out the hair i like to start from the bottom and work my way to the top the lice will actually like travel pretty quickly so you need to make sure to keep the hair that you've combed totally separate from the hair that you need to comb which is why i like to work from the bottom all the way to the top of the head for like the back back yeah yep the back bottom part up through and what will happen is is you won't get any in the beginning because the lice are slow they're like trying to save themselves going to the top of the head so you'll get all of them at the very end It's like they can sense where the hair is moving or something. So once you've combed through the hair and do, I mean, go really slow and be really methodical. If you are very slow and methodical with, for this first time, I tend to, I think I get 90 to 95% of them this, this first time, if you go nice and slow, then I don't know if this is true, but this is just what I do and what I do works, so I'm sharing it all. I take a couple of tablespoons of salt, mix it in with some water, and I spray the head with salt water. And you think that accomplishes what? Um, I think that salt makes things get hot faster and like causes water to evaporate faster. And so in my mind, part of why the heat kills them is because of the temperature the the lice needs to get. And so that the lice is salty, it's going to get hotter faster. Sure. Is any of this true? I, um, I doubt it. Okay. But anyway, it's a part of my steps is spray the salt water. I don't want to test not doing it because at the point that someone's asking for help, they don't want me to be like, well, let's experiment taking one of my steps out and seeing just, if it's we're just doing as what effective. Worked last we're time. just doing what worked last time. <laughs> like, the word on the street is out. If you've got the headlights, you you, you call Johanna. <laughs> like, Sometimes when I stir my batter, I stir clockwise and then counterclockwise. And it doesn't probably do anything. But it makes me... F- it worked last time. It worked last time. Then... Uh, depending on your hair dryer, you are going to keep the hair dryer as close to the scalp as you can without scarring your child or burning your child. Don't burn it again. Move no burning, it. just heat. But, but you, yeah, you want that heat to get in. You want it to get everywhere. You want to make the hair super dry because anything you didn't get with the comb, you are now... You're salting trying, the earth and you are killing it with heat. You're trying to desiccate the, the eggs the mainly. Like if you didn't get any all the eggs, you want like in my mind an egg covered in salt and fried is not going to bear fruit. Sure. And it looks like it works, 
but who knows? Maybe the salt doesn't I, work. I think the heat is probably the more important part than a little bit of salt dissolved in water. Okay. But in any event, in any event the idea is that it, the egg gets too dry to be alive anymore. It, yes. It heats up and is too dried out. Yes. And you think that this actually helps? Yes. And um, this whole time, I'm just switching out the the drier stuff so that everything is com- coming out like scalding hot from the dryer. And um, anything I can't dry, like um, couches and stuff, I just vacuum, quite honestly. I just... I just go with a quick vacuum over it. If it's uh, your car seat, I put like a towel or whatever over the kid's car seat. I recommend going ahead and treating the adults, even though if they regularly use a hairdryer, they, you're probably fine uh, because you, you have the heat. But you might as well just treat it like it's everywhere and treat everybody. Okay. Okay. So that's that's day one. And that tends to be the worst day. Well, I should hope so. Yeah. Then I wait either the next day or the day after that, and I recomb and I redry. Yeah. In case I missed anything. And how do you know if you're getting results? The second day, it's odd for me to find anything. Well, how do you know if you found something? Oh, because the co- they get caught in the comb. Yeah. And then what do you do with the comb? Oh. Oh, good job, Jared. Yes, so you comb, and then often you swipe it into a paper towel. Just wipe it off. You wipe it into a paper towel, yes. Otherwise, you're just going to take the lice from the comb and just move them to a different part of the head. Plus, the paper towel is white. Yes, and so you can see them. Correct. Good work, Jared. You see the little eggs, and you can see that the lice you can see fairly easily because they're alive and they move around. Yes. The eggs are alive, too but they don't move around? Correct. And then the little babies are really hard to see. Yeah. But the, but this comb will get all three of those things. So the the second day, you know you're doing well if you get nothing. If you happen to get as much as you did the last time you treated, either A, your kid's getting re-exposed somehow, you're like missing something, or B, it, it just wasn't thorough enough. On the first day. And so you should keep doing this every day until you start to get almost nothing. Almost nothing? Well, nothing to almost I, nothing. How about nothing? Nothing. I would keep doing it. Yeah, I suppose I do until I get nothing. And then I go back. How about I get a little lazier about the the hair dryer or something? The hair dryer is very important, though. The heat is the secret, I think. I don't know. Not a doctor. True, but the less and less I see on the comb, the less I'm going to worry about it. True. But you keep doing the comb, because the comb's easy. Yes. Well, it depends on your hair, I guess. Yes. For my hair, because it's short and fine, it's very easy. Correct. But the seventh day, no matter what, seven days after the last time I checked, I'm going to go back and check again. After a week? A week. Once you think you're done, use the comb again? Correct. If you're anything like me, you're just going to be using the comb on yourself because you're afraid that something might be there. Yes, you're kind of segueing into the next part. All right, let's do it. What is it? Okay, well, how to prevent them so you just never get them. How do you do that? Well, first, I should say, I thought I had this figured out. Uh Uh-huh. And then we have an individual in our family who has extremely short hair. and And I thought, well... They can't really get lice. They have extremely short hair. Turns, Turns out, out that's not true. Not true. <laughs> Turns out that's a lie. So FYI, if you think, well, your kid has short hair, you don't have to worry about this. I'm going to tell you this kid, like half inch hair. Like a Marine. Yes. So I, I wasn't treating this individual like I was treating the rest of the family. And, and so now it's just protocol for everybody. All right, essentially every seven days in the household, just like normal bath time, only this time leave a little bit of the conditioner and don't go crazy pants with the comb, but just go through everyone's hair with the comb, like three to five minutes sweep through and then blow dry the hair once a week. Do you think this prevents it? I do. Because A, if if your kid's been exposed... Right? I don't know what their life cycle is. I think it's like seven days or 14 days. 
Yeah. We should probably look this up before we, we start talking. We probably should have looked that up before we start talking. It's it's like a it's like a month for the whole cycle from like egg to adult to egg. So you want to catch them before they can lay. So if your kid's been exposed over it, the week. Yeah, there's only going to be like one or two adult. It's not like they're going to have a whole nest of hair. Right. Filled with lice that comes from the, you know, them breeding several cycles of eggs, right? Right. So you're going to find nothing. But if you find something, you know that you found it at the very, very beginning. And so you don't have to go as crazy pants managing it but really it just makes it it's just easier i i think it keeps them at bay it's like an apple a day Ooh, i made a rhyme great (laughs) that's if anyone had ever thought of that rhyme before (laughs) okay yeah and and i think it does little things like my kids aren't scared of lice they they see lice as a science experiment but it does help, I think, also keep them more conscientious about how we we don't share hats and and all that type of jazz. So but, it works both ways. It both keeps them from freaking out about it when it happens, but also helps keep them more conscious about the behaviors that make it happen. Correct. Which is probably why you don't see it as much with older kids is because they just don't like share hats or rub their heads together. I think also, though, older kids are more likely to blow dry a lot more. Again, I'm not 100% sure on your blow dry theory. Okay, I'm just telling you what I do works. Right. Who knows which part of it works. It's just those three steps. Well, I know work. that comb works. So, I mean, step A1 alpha well, no, is I to know, use the comb. I know the heat works because I have trapped some and then I've blasted them with my heat and then they die. Like, right away. Like, in five seconds. Yeah, but are you able to get it hot enough on the head without burning the head and still kill the lice? I think so. I mean, it can't be good for them. It certainly doesn't hurt, right? It doesn't hurt. And Well, yes, the kids, right. my kids would argue that their head gets hot. Right, well. <laughs> but we know he can, Okay, I got you. We know he can kill them. Can you actually get it that hot on the head? Sure you can. Is like, I mean, if you're blowing through the hair instead of the scalp, obviously you can. Right? If yes. it's right down next to the scalp, maybe you can, maybe you can't. But the heat certainly doesn't help them. Doesn't help them. And you're going to want to do anything that you, th- you can to hurt them. <laughs> All right, we're going to recap. Recap us, Jared. Everybody gets lice in preschool or elementary school unless you're just extraordinarily lucky. Yes. Um. So be prepared for it. Don't panic. Don't panic. Don't, don't create social drama. Don't... The last thing you want to do is have your kids judge someone else because they got head lice and think they're creepy because then just next yeah, week your kid's going to get it. No, nope, it's just, it's cool. Be cool. Get the get the comb and the podcast link. Yes. That Johanna's going to put there. Ah, uh, now he's mentioned it twice. Hi. Uh, Sometimes I like to pretend I'm going to do that and then I don't. Or it's really easy if you have fine hair, if you've got long or coarse hair. Curly or curly hair, look you, out. Yeah. Um, but what you do is you put conditioner in in the bath, in the shower, and then leave some of the conditioner in, and it makes the comb go well enough. Yes, and just you know, put on a movie, go slow. Section out the hair, start from the the back of the neck. Yep. And work your way up, and you'll kind of get most of them once you get to the top. Yep. Uh, as you go, you you wipe. The uh, comb on a paper towel, and then you can see if you're getting anything. Uh, plus, it removes them so that um, you just don't you're, you're re-spread not, them. You're not yep. moving them to a different part of the hair. You take all the like hats and pillows and stuff in the house, anything where they could live, even temporarily, and put them in the dryer on super high heat. Correct. Vacuum the couches and st- stuff that are have fabric on them. Yes, I will say I have taken my dryer or my hair dryer and gone over certain fabrics and stuff. Blast it with heat. Yep, blasted it with heat. I'm jumping around a little bit, but the you're gonna spray the hair with salt water to appease the gods of the lice so that <laughs> I really think this makes a difference. I think that the salt like I hope we don't get another chance to test it, but I 
No, because my seven day my seven day cycle. Well, someone will call. <laughs> I'll get a phone call some night, and then I'll need to go somewhere. If anybody gets a chance to test the salt water, write in and let us know what you think. <laughs> um, but who's willing to take the chance? I I would be. You would? Yeah, no, makes, it, I want him gone. The I did, instant I find it, I, I want did. it out. You could shout at him, too, and it's not going to help them go away. I will say I have tested it where when I sprayed them with salt water, it took less seconds for them to die than when I just blasted them with heat. Mm-hmm. I blasted both with heat. And then the, the part that's maybe more important even than the salt water is, is blast them with heat. Blast them with heat. So try try and not aim at the scalp, but get in there as close as you can to the hair and get the hair really hot. Well, they live kind of close to the scalp. They do. So you got to get into the, yeah. So don't burn your kids. Don't but, burn your kids. Which is a... Have a, them hold their hands over their ears. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fine wire to walk because they will complain about it just oh, being a little hot. I should say this. You have to take the heat and follow the same trajectory. You can't just do the heat everywhere. You got to you got to make a line of fire. Start from the base and then slowly work your way up or start from the top and slowly work your way down, but you don't want a chance. Those suckers can move quick in here, so you don't you don't want a chance that they just move away from the heat. Okay. Good. Okay. Do the same thing again tomorrow. You'll be very pleased at how much less there is. Yes. Hopefully there's nothing even. Yes. But um, much less, which will be nice. Keep doing that once or twice a day. The the comb. The comb. Yeah, you don't have to be as diligent after that first time. Until you don't see anything on the comb anymore when you wipe it on the paper towel. Correct. Then your life's free, probably. Yeah. But do the do the whole procedure again in seven days. Correct. And make sure that there's still nothing. Right. Because your kid could be getting re-exposed and there's nothing you can do about that. So if you just keep on it every seven days, basically for eternity, then you should keep your household lights free. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jared. Thanks, Joanna. Joanna, do you get questions from listeners ever? Yes, we do. How do those listeners send you questions? They send us an email. Where does that email go? Teachertalk for teachers at gmail.com. But wait, what kind of four? How do I do four? All of the fours. They can do a number four. They can write the word F-O-R or they can do F-O-U-R, even though that one doesn't quite make sense. Well, perfect. Teachertalk for teachers at gmail.com. Yes. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you, Jared. Teacher Talk, the podcast for teachers who are lifers but still want to have a life.